Hi everyone. So today I'm going to talk about a very highly requested topic, which is the subcubic graph number or the subcubic graph function, which is also known as the SCGN. And as you know, I have made many, many videos on big numbers and fast growing sequences, including the famous tree sequence and tree three. However, I have not made a video on explaining the SCG. So this is the video and surprisingly, I cannot find any other uh, YouTube videos trying to explain what is this subcubic graph. So this is one of the first videos. So anyway, let's get started. So what is the subcubic graph number or function? And again, in this video, I'm going to try to explain it as easy as possible in layman terms. So uh, again, it's not an easy function to explain. So I'm just trying my best. And probably, I don't know if this is the best explanation or not, but anyway. So what is a, uh, first of all, um, this SCG function is very similar to the tree sequence. So of course, feel free to go ahead and read about the tree sequence or the uh, tree, my tree videos first before watching this one there uh, that way you can probably understand better i think the tree sequence is slightly easier to understand than the scg function maybe that's why there's no other video about the scg but again it's very similar to the tree sequence and basically what it is the scg n or scg k is basically uh the longest game you can play with a certain number of k so again, slightly more confusing than the tree sequence. Um, and actually, I have to say that um, the SCG function is proven to grow much faster than the tree sequence. So uh, the SCG3 has been proven to be much bigger than tree 3. And for some reason, SCG13 is one of the most studied numbers regarding to this function here. So what is a graph? So a graph is basically in simple terms, is a collection of vertices along with edges connecting some pairs of vertices. So here are some examples of a graph. So it could look like this. So the dot here is a vertex. Uh, so it can be like this. This we call this a loop, and it can also look like this. So here we have two vertices connected with an edge, and the third example here is we have four vertices with uh, an edge connecting to the middle one. So this is what we call a graph. It is not the same as trees. And um, now let's look at some of the rules for this game. Uh, again, it's quite similar to the tree sequence, um, but not the same, obviously. So for the first rule is that the graph must be subcubic, as suggested by the name over here. So what is subcubic? Subcubic means there can be at most three edges connecting to any vertex. So this would be the example here. So this is a vertex here. And subcubic means there can be at most three edges. So there are three edges in this connecting to this vertex. So this is allowed and this is the maximum number of edges uh, that you can use in this game. So one, two, three, you cannot have four or five or more than that. You can only have at most three edges because this is called the subcubic graph. So the second rule is that uh, a loop is allowed. So what is a loop? Again, I show you already, this is a loop. A loop counts as a two uh, edges connecting to a vertex. So this is count as two edges. Um, but anyway, this is the definition of a, a loop. And then um, uh, let's see. So the third rule is that you cannot have a one-way edge so this is not allowed this is called a one-way edge so if you have a vertex connect by an edge but you must have another vertex over here something like this is not allowed and i have to follow up actually um at most three edges it means the number you can have for the number of edges is zero to three 
um, you can have any between 0 to 3 that means what that means is that you can have something like this you can have vertices only without the edge that is allowed because the maximum is 3 you can have 2 or 1 or 0 so 0 is allowed anyway the fourth rule is that the nth graph can only have at most n plus k number of vertices so in your function here actually we're using k instead of n so each k over here uh, it's not as obvious as the tree sequence because tree tree k is just k in that case for tree sequence it just represent the number of colors but here it doesn't represent the number of vertices or, or, or the number of colors there's no colors even involved in here it just k in the sag function you just represent um here the only reference is here so n plus k vertices is the um the maximum um number of vertices you can have in the n graph of each scg k so i know it's a little bit confusing but i will show you in the example over here and the last rule is that all previous graphs cannot be contained in the next graph so again very similar to the tree sequence you cannot have uh let's say this graph um can i mean this graph cannot be contained in the next one so very simple rule again you can watch my tree video if you want similar idea so here is the example over here so my example is the scg zero so this sequence starts with zero so it can be proven that scg zero equals six so here is how so first again uh, the first graph looks like this so just one vertice with a loop and again this is one of the rule over here you cannot have uh let's say a hundred vertices in your first graph because that's the rule for graph one in this case gn g stands for the graph n is the you know the sequence so graph one is g1 you know the first graph you can have at most n plus k vertices this is from the um fourth rule over here so n here is um one so n here stands for your the number of graph this is in, this is the first graph so therefore n is one k is zero over here because k stands for you know whatever you put in the scg function so the rule is that for your first graph you can have at most one plus zero number of vertices that means one you can have at most one vertice vertex for the for your first graph and your second graph you can have at most um 2 plus 0, so n plus k, n here is 2, k is 0, so 2. For your third graph, you can have at most 3 vertices, fourth graph 4, graph 5, 5, graph 6, 6. This is the most important rule over here, kind of. So with graph 1, you can have at most 1 vertices, so this is how you draw your graph. The second graph, you can have at most 2 vertices, and so on. So for graph 2, again, this graph cannot be contained in your second graph. So this is the only way you can do for SCG zero. So your second graph can have at most two vertices. In your third graph, you can have at most three vertices. And again, this is not contained in this one. And these two cannot be contained in, in this one as well. So for the fourth one, the first three graph cannot be contained in the fourth one. Obviously it's not because the fourth graph only has two dots. This one has three. I mean vertices so three vertices is not contained in two vertices this is very important but the reverse is true so the two vertices is actually included in the three vertices but again this is the next one so this is allow and then the fifth graph you can have only um, again the first four graphs cannot be contained in the fifth one and the last one um, the first five graphs cannot be contained in the sixth one so the sixth one the only solution is if it's an empty graph so therefore you end at six so therefore scg zero equal to six so this is the short explanation i try to explain it as layman as possible so scg one when k here is one so that means you can have at most one plus one so therefore graph one you can have at most two vertices two three four five seven i mean two three four five six seven etc and etc i mean however just by adding one more vertices 
you your longest the longest game you can play suddenly becomes extremely extremely large so again scg0 equals 6 however scg1 is proven to be much much bigger than g64 much bigger than g64 um, you can look it up on the wikipedia page it will kind of tell you how big that is and scg2 of course much bigger than scg1 and scg3 is proven to be much much bigger than tree 3 in fact it's much bigger than even tree of tree of tree 3 with tree 3 number of trees so there we have it this is what the subcubic graph kind of looks like and i try to explain it in layman terms so anyway thanks for watching and have a nice day